When we have rigid bodies and they only experience conservative forces, we can use this formula to figure out unknown values. The first term is the initial kinetic energy and the second term is the initial potential energy. On the other side, we have the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. Kinetic energy for rigid bodies can be found using these equations. And I went through them in detail in the previous video about work and energy. So if you don't remember or need a refresh, please check the description. We will talk about two types of potential energy, which is gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. Imagine we have an object like this. Let's draw a datum through the center of this object. If we move the object upwards, then the displacement is positive. We can figure out the potential energy by multiplying the weight times the displacement. Another way of writing it is like this. It's simply weight expanded, which is just the mass times acceleration due to gravity. If the object moves below the datum, then the displacement is negative. This is because weight must do work to bring the object back to the datum. Next, we have elastic potential energy, and that occurs due to springs. Let's say we have a spring like this, and an object is attached to it. When we compress it or stretch it, we can figure out the potential energy by using this equation. It's half times the stiffness of the spring times the length of compression or extension. Both of these are conservative forces. That means the path that an object takes doesn't matter to these forces. So for example, imagine we have two identical objects like this, and they both descend using these respective paths. At the end, it doesn't matter what path both of these objects took because the potential energy is based on the initial location and the final location. Because the displacement is the same, the gravitational potential energy is also the same regardless of their path. I go in-depth about conservative forces in the kinematics video about conservation of energy. So if you would like a recap, please take a look at that as well. For some questions, we will need to calculate the mass moment of inertia. I show some examples here, but you can find many more by searching for them for all sorts of different objects. Now let's get started with some examples and see how we can use the equations we talked about. Let's take a look at this problem where we have a block attached to a pulley and we need to find the velocity of the block when it descends 600 millimeters. To solve this problem, we're going to use the conservation of energy equation. So let's write it down. We will do each section separately and then add it up. So let's focus on kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy is zero since everything starts from rest. To find the final kinetic energy, we have the kinetic energy of the spool and the kinetic energy of the block. For the spool, since it's a rotation about a fixed axis, we can use this equation. For the block, we can use this equation. To use the formula for the spool, we need to figure out the mass and moment of inertia. The equation to find it is this. K is the radius of gyration. So the mass is 20 kilograms and the radius of gyration is 0.16 meters. Now let's think. Since the question is asking us to find the velocity of the block, it would be great if we can write the angular velocity in terms of velocity. We can do that by remembering the velocity of the block is equal to the angular velocity of the spool times the radius. Now we can isolate it for angular velocity. We can plug this into our kinematics equation. The radius of the spool is 0.2 meters, so let's plug that in and simplify. Now for the kinetic equation of the block. The mass of the block is 15 kilograms, so let's plug it in. The final kinetic energy is then the addition of both of these values. Now we can focus on potential energy. We only need to focus on the block since the spool won't have potential energy. Let's draw a datum through the center of the block. At the start, the displacement is zero meters, which means our initial potential energy is zero. For the final potential energy, the block has now moved 0.6 meters down. So that's our displacement in the vertical direction. Since the displacement is below the datum, it's negative. Let's solve. And that's our final gravitational potential energy. Now it's just a matter of plugging in all of these values into our conservation of energy equation. Let's solve for the velocity of the block. Let's take a look at this question where we have a bar resting. Then we rotate the bar 90 degrees and we want to figure out the stiffness of the spring that would hold it at that angle for a moment. So let's start off by first writing our conservation of energy equation. As before, we will focus on each section and then add it up. So for the initial and final kinetic energy, 
we know that the bar starts from rest and also stops at the end, which means both kinetic energies are zero. Next, we need to consider potential energy. We need to consider gravity and the spring when it comes to potential energy. Let's draw a datum like this and mark off the center of the bar, which is the center of mass. Initially, the displacement of the bar is zero meters, which means the initial gravitational potential energy is zero. For the spring, it's not compressed or extended, so the initial elastic potential energy is also zero. Now let's rotate the bar. Notice that the center of the bar is now one meter below the datum. Let's write the final gravitational potential energy. The mass is six kilograms, then we have gravity, and then the displacement is negative one meters since it's below the datum. Let's simplify. Next, final elastic potential energy. We need to figure out how much the spring extended. For that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we're calculating the total length of the spring minus the initial length of the spring. Now we can use that value in our equation and simplify. Next step is to plug all of these values into our conservation of energy equation. Let's solve for the stiffness of the spring, which is our answer. Let's take a look at this question. We have a pendulum and it's released from rest. We need to figure out the angular velocity when theta equals 90 degrees. Let's start with the kinetic energies. Since the system starts from rest, the initial kinetic energy is zero. To find the final kinetic energy, we need to use this equation because the pendulum rotates about a fixed axis. First, we can figure out the mass moment of inertia about the center of mass using the radius of gyration given to us. The mass is 30 kilograms and the radius of gyration is 0.3 meters. Now the goal in this question is to figure out the angular velocity. That means we need to write the velocity in our equation in terms of angular velocity. We can do that using this equation. We know the velocity at the center of mass is equal to the angular velocity times distance from point O to the center of mass since this is a rotation about a fixed axis. If this is unfamiliar to you, please see the description for rigid bodies and rotation about a fixed axis. Let's plug what we know into our kinetic equation along with the length to the center of mass, which is 0.35 meters. The mass of the pendulum is 30 kilograms. Let's simplify. Now we can look at potential energy. Let's draw a datum when theta equals zero degrees. Initially, since the displacement is zero and the spring is not stretched, both gravitational and elastic potential energy is zero. Now for the final potential energy. Let's move the pendulum to the position when theta is 90 degrees. We see that point G is 0.35 meters away from the datum. So let's figure out the final gravitational potential energy. Since the displacement is below the datum, it's negative. Let's solve. Next, let's figure out the final elastic potential energy. We need to figure out how much the spring stretches. For that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we find the total stretch of the spring and then subtract the initial length. Let's use this value along with the stiffness of the spring. Now for our conservation of energy equation. Let's plug all of our values in. We can now solve for the angular velocity, which is our answer. That should cover the types of problems you will face when it comes to rigid bodies and conservation of energy. I hope this video helped. Thanks so much for watching and best of luck with your studies.